What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are back again with the 95 Corolla wagon and the rear brakes on this, they are drum brakes, but they are warped. So basically they need to be replaced. I don't recommend machining these. I mean, you can if you want to, if that's your only option. But really nowadays with how much it costs to get a set of new drum brakes and shoes, just replace them. Then you can have nice shiny new ones. So other than the springs on this being very annoying, which I'll show you in a little bit, it's a pretty easy job. So let's get started. Let's jack up the car. There's a little nub on the center of the rear subframe. That's where you want to jack it up from in order to raise the rear evenly. Take the wheel off. Usually it's a 21 millimeter socket. For me, I have special lug nuts to fit this wheel, so I'm using a different tool, but 21 millimeter socket if you have stock wheels. With the parking brake disengaged or off, go ahead and remove the drum. Sometimes this is a little tricky, and that's because if you had the drum on for a long time, the shoes create a lip on the inside of the drum and don't want to let go. In my case, it looks like it does want to let go. And that's good. It's a lot of brake dust. Keep in mind, brake drums have a lot of brake dust inside of them. So the first thing I want to do is take some brake parts cleaner and clean off all of this. At this point, you might look at these brakes and say, well, they're still looking pretty good. Why are you replacing them? Well, like I said before, my brake drums are warped and I don't want to just slap new brake drums on because it's just like rotors. When you do front rotors that are warped, your pads are also worn unevenly and that's not good. So for the price, I just went with all new uh, drums, shoes and springs and hardware and all that. So typically at this point, I would take a wire brush to the hub. Mine is actually still in very good condition. Looks like I coated it pretty well with anti-seize last time. So I'm just gonna leave this as is. Uh, I'm gonna brush the old anti-seize off and put some new stuff on later. So I guess we'll continue to the brakes. The first thing I wanna do is remove this top spring over here. So I'm gonna put on some safety glasses so that the springs don't fly at my face. And then I'm gonna start by removing this top spring here. I like to do this with needle nose locking pliers. I think that that's the easiest thing to do. You could also do it with a little screwdriver or pry bar and pry the spring out. Whatever works best for you. As long as you clamp these on tight, I find that these work pretty well. There we go. As I'm removing components, I'm going to put them aside in the exact same order and direction that they came off in. That way I remember how to put it all back together. Of course, you can always reference the other side, but sometimes doing this is easier. All right, so this needs to get off of here. There we go. Set this aside and we'll come back to this later and clean it up. Next, I'm gonna take off this little tiny spring for the e-brake lever. Remember how that goes. And I do have all new hardware, but you can definitely reuse the hardware if you need to, as long as it is not corroded, rotted, broken, bent in any way. And I've, I've reused hardware for several uh, exchanges of drums and shoes. They're fine. All right, next I'm gonna remove this uh, pin here, the locking pin. I'm gonna put my hand on the backside and hold it, prevent it from going through. And then as I press it, I'm gonna twist this cap 90 degrees. That's gonna unlock it. Looks like it, there we go. Now it went through. Sometimes you have to use more than just your fingers, but this one is uh, soft enough to where I can just squish it with my fingers. Cause you know, Corolla. Okay, take this pin out, take this shoe off. Let's do the same to this one over here. go take the pin out this front facing shoe comes off and then here's your rear facing shoe with the parking brake lever there's another spring at the bottom here go ahead and remove that set that aside and to remove the parking brake lever from here all you have to do is pull the cable out or push this in just basically compress the spring and make this come out I'm gonna lock some locking pliers onto it that way I can grab it and hold it 
there we go just twist that you can let go of this and there you have your arm with the shoe we can remove this arm now i'm going to give this just a little extra scrub that way i remove the old uh any c's good to clean up this surface here too get rid of all the debris All right, that's all clean. Now we have to remove this arm off of this shoe. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and a hammer and just punch the screwdriver in there to spread the clip out. Once you get the screwdriver to go in there, you can twist it. Usually that does the trick. Sometimes a little pry bar helps and works better. And once you have it out far enough, you can stick a screwdriver behind the clip and work it out like that. There you go. Out it comes. Now you can pull this through. If you wanted to take it off on this side, you can, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to put this into the new shoe. The new shoe being any of them because they're all the same before you actually put it through clean it up just a little bit and add a little bit of brake grease or silicone paste i like to use silicone paste brake grease works too whatever you have not a lot just enough to lubricate it so it doesn't squeak and then you shouldn't technically reuse these, um, so I'm going to use my new ones. If you don't have a hardware kit, I guess you can. Just make sure it's still sturdy enough, because metal, once you bend it a few times, well, it tends to break. So I'm going to take my new one, slide it through, just like that. Make sure you push it in all the way. And then I'm just going to take pliers and squeeze it. It's got to get squeezed a little more than this. There we go. That's good enough. Perfect. Before I continue with the reinstallation, I'm just going to take this adjuster apart, clean it up a little bit, well, re-lubricate it as well. In order to take the spring out, you actually have to take the threaded part all the way out. So go ahead and do that. Take this out as well. If yours is seized, you'll have to soak it in some rust penetrant, unseize it, lubricate it, or just get a new one. But these do not come with the hardware kit. Just so you know, these are not part of it. I'm sure you can buy them separately, but not part of the hardware kit. Take this out. Let's go ahead and clean the threads on this. They're not too bad. Um, this still has old grease on it, so that's totally fine. I'm just going to add more to it. But I'm going to clean right here where you can see it's got somewhat of a buildup in there. If you have a wire wheel, that would be ideal. I don't, so I'm just going to use my wire brush and lightly brush the threads. And to lubricate this, I'm just going to use some silicone paste, put it all over the threads. Go ahead and thread this back in. This is reverse thread, so you're definitely going to get confused when you do this. Unless you're already used to reverse thread. I'm not. It confuses me every time. I'm just going to take the excess grease here, place it up on top, and work it into this area where the um, smaller part just pivots and slides over. It's important to have it all lubricated. So I'm going to push this back all the way, and that worked the grease in. Now I'm going to take it back out and install the new spring. The new spring had the shorter arm towards the longer part with the threaded area. So it went in like this. And then the threaded part went over. And again, I'm just going to bottom this out all the way. With new shoes and new brakes and everything, it's best to start with it bottomed out all the way. And then adjust from there. So this is ready, <clears throat> and to get the backing plate ready, all you need to do is just apply some lubrication to the areas where the shoes are gonna ride. So there's an area on the top here, one here, and one on the bottom. I like to put it on the wheel cylinder as well. That is way too much. And of course, do the, do the same to this other side.
Next, I want to put the parking brake cable on. And to do that, this is going to be a little tricky, but you have to pull the spring back and then basically insert this into here. So I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to do that. I guess I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to lock some locking pliers very gently onto the spring. It's a pretty stiff spring. Maybe this will help me. Oh, yeah. Now I can... Ow. Now I can pull it back. Hook this over. Come on. Ah, this is probably the hardest part of the whole job. Come on. Ow. Oof, that hurt, whatever that was, but it's on, so that's all that matters. Okay, so now we can bring this up into place. Make sure that the spring from the parking brake cable goes into this divot right there. You don't want it sitting down low or especially not up above like that. Make sure it's sitting right where it needs to go. While I have this out, I want to attach this little spring that holds the parking brake lever onto the shoe. That's how it goes in like that. It swoops in and then back out. And then it actually hooks onto right there. So grab something. That will help you extend it and bring it over. It's a very, very short spring, very weak, so you don't need a lot of force to put it on there. And now I'm just going to attach this shoe to the backing plate. That way it's secure and it stops flopping around. So I'm going to take my new pin with a new cap here, put it through the backing plate, ignore the extra hole there. We'll pretend that's not there. Put it through the shoe, take the spring, put it over, take the other cap, Put it over the spring and this is going to keep wanting to fall off because obviously it's not being held on with anything but just line up the uh, blade of the pin with the cap give it a twist and it should lock into place there we go now i'm going to put on the bottom spring and i'm going to hook it on to the other shoe and make sure that the shoe goes over this area over here put it in like this let's attach this one as well make sure it's lined up everywhere put that through put the spring on and the cap oops give it a twist oops that didn't work there we go that's on. So all we're missing now is the top spring. Yeah, so this is going to get interesting here because I'm going to have to hook it on to there. Right, so that's hooked on. Then I have to put the adjuster into its slot here. That worked. Then you have to twist this. And then you have to twist this so that this little tab sticks out towards you. You don't want it in that way. And now you need to bring the shoes together, grab the spring, and hook it up and over. And this is going to be the second toughest part of the job. Oh wow, this one actually went in pretty smooth. Oh, <laughs> that's why it went in smooth. Alright, I can adjust from here, that's fine. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to spread out the pads, shoes, whatever. Slip this through. Nope, it's turning the wrong way. Stop turning that way. Why is it turning even more that way? Come on, my finger's in the danger zone here. Stop turning that way. Nope. All right, so basically, this is what it should look like at the end. Your spring right here should be propped up against this little tab. The adjuster arm in the back should be propped up against, you can hear it click, so that's good. That's exactly what you want. I'm gonna back this off again. You can't, you can't back the spring off or the adjuster off unless you push that arm out. It's hooked in here, that's hooked in there. So uh, that's it. Now let's put the new drum on and adjust the brakes. And really quick before we put the drum on, I'm just gonna put any C's on the surface of the hub here so that the drum doesn't rust on here. Again, as you saw before, my previous any C's job did very very well, performed well, because clearly there's zero rust on here. Oops, that's a little too much.
You don't want to put too much on here because if you do, it'll actually get onto the braking surface. And speaking of the braking surface, before I fully install my drum, I'm going to go ahead, put it on backwards. That's going to hold it on nice for me. And I'm going to take a little bit of brake parts cleaner and clean this braking surface because it's coated with oil from the factory. And you definitely don't want any of those oils on your braking surface. Flip this around, install it, and we're definitely going to have to do some adjustments on the shoes. Yeah, way too loose. So, let's give this a couple cranks and expand the shoes. This is just a trial and error process. Put this drum back on. What you're looking for with drum brakes is minimal drag. We still have nothing. Get it back off. Expand these a little more. You want to go a few clicks at a time, or a few turns at a time, I should say, because a small adjustment here will make a big difference on how these grip. Nope. Yeah, so we're pretty far off. Okay, I'm starting to hear it. That's a good sign. I go three little turns. Still not engaged yet. What does this do? Oh, okay. We have some friction, but still not enough. Gonna keep going a little more. The ideal situation here, the ideal adjustment of drum brakes is with the wheel on, you want the wheel to spin freely one and a half rotations, give or take, and then stop. That's how you know it's properly adjusted. Need a couple more cranks. I might have made it a little too tight now. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. We'll back it off a little. That's okay. So push the little arm back and use a different tool to back it off. It's going to go a couple teeth on that. All right. So this is better. I'm going to apply the parking brake a couple times. That will basically seat the shoes a little bit, and then we'll see how well it's adjusted. All right, I pumped up the brakes. I pulled on the e-brake lever. This feels decent. I'm going to give it a couple more cranks, and then we'll call it a day because they do self-adjust. So it doesn't have to be perfect right off the bat. Like I said, they self-adjust as you drive. Usually, you can put the car in reverse, and then as you're reversing, pull on the e-brake lever continuously, and they adjust or hit the brakes. Um, typically, you'd want to pull on the e-brake lever, though. This is actually really good right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel on, and then just do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll be done. All right, let's get the wheel back on. Snug it up and torque it. Well, technically, the... Factory torque is 76 foot-pounds. I'm going to go for 85. All right, I applied the parking brake. Let's see how well this is adjusted. Let's see, that's pretty good. It spins a little bit. It'll, it'll self-adjust a little more. All right. Now do the same to the other side of the vehicle. All right, so I still have to do the other side brakes. Everything that I used in this video will be linked in the description, parts, tools, everything. And I'll also add some related videos. Now I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. And if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can get notified every time a Corolla video comes out. See you next time.